I'm Josh, I'm a qualified actuary and I've over 11 years of investment experience on the world's largest asset owners, which currently manages over $163 billion. In this video, I'm gonna run through my top five books that will give you all the knowledge you need to know to work in mathematical finance and become an investment actuary. So let's get into it. So book number one is Financial Calculus by Martin Baxter and Andrew Rennie. Now this was my very first book on mathematical finance and I bought it just before I went to university. And I would say it gives you the best introduction to the kind of maths that you'll need to know to understand derivative pricing and in particular, the Black-Scholes formula. This book is actually part of the recommended reading if you want to specialize in financial derivatives as an actuary. And I actually used this book or the knowledge I gained from this book in securing my job offer. So in my interview, I was asked how would I price an option from first principles and I use the binomial pricing model that was at the start of this book. I would say it's quite detailed, so there's a lot of quite hardcore maths in it, but I found it really useful to actually guide my way through university so I could pick the right modules and make sure that I was learning the right sort of maths to be able to apply later. Because I studied pure maths, I didn't study mathematical finance. The second book that will give you all the knowledge you need to know to work in mathematical finance is Options, Futures and Other Derivatives by John Hull. So this is another book that's recommended reading for the finance and derivatives speciality of the actuarial profession. I would say it is a great kind of reference book. It is very thick. There's a lot of information in here, but it kind of covers everything. So I use this book a lot at the start of my career when I was researching complex hedge fund strategies. So I researched discretionary macro and volatility strategies. So I had to understand all the complicated options they were using to make money. So binaries, like digitals, barriers, volatility swaps, this covers them all off quite nicely. Also because the funds I was covering had a huge amount of derivatives, the overall fund structure kind of took the shape of derivatives. So to understand the risk of those funds, I had to understand the Greeks, so Vega, Gamma, Delta, and that helped me explain the fund's performance profile to prospective clients. Again, massive, dense book. I don't know if I'll read it cover to cover, but an incredible reference book. So when you're trying to understand what hedge fund managers are talking about, I think this is a great starting point. The third book that will give you everything you need to know to work in mathematical finance is Against the Gods, The Remarkable Story of Risk by Peter Bernstein. It basically goes through the history of risk. So starting from the point where no one had any concept of risk and everything was up to the gods, where to the point where people start to use probability and statistics to understand how to forecast things. And it also goes into uncertainty as well, which I think would be really useful as a concept early on in your career. So the idea that models are not 100% perfect because you can never know the probabilities exactly. So there is an element of uncertainty in the models that we use and there are different degrees of uncertainty. And I thought that's something that I only kind of came across more formally in the latter parts of my career, but I wish I'd known it earlier because I think it would have solved a lot of problems for me. So yeah, bit of an easier read. I did read this cover to cover, only found it recently and yeah. Absolutely loved it and we'll be rereading it. The fourth book that will give you everything you need to know to work in mathematical finance and be an investment actuary is, I've only got this on Kindle because it's uh, expensive to buy hard copy, but uh, The Failure of Risk Management by Douglas Hubbard. This book would have saved me hours of debates about hedge fund performance and investment performance with clients and colleagues if I'd read it earlier. Basically, when you go into mathematical finance, you learn the kind of Black-Scholes formula and the fact that most stock prices, investment, returns follow this kind of geometric brown in motion which is a model and when you get into the real world you realize that actually most investment funds or stock markets or any kind of asset price doesn't really follow this geometric brown in motion so you have to kind of find other ways to explain performance of an asset or a portfolio so this book would have helped a lot given it talks about the problems with using kind of normal distributions for risk management it doesn't say that you should bin them completely but it says that you should understand their flaws i think it goes into a really interesting point about how in the tails, so when you get big drawdowns or big spikes in performance, investment returns tend to follow more of a power law distribution. So obviously that has a way fatter tail than a normal distribution. And also it goes into just, I guess, the issues with the various risk management techniques that are out there. And I feel like I need to absorb even more of this as I apply it in my day job currently. Overall, this is a great summary of how to practically manage risk and covers a lot of the blind spots that have been found through the various kind of crises that have happened in the corporate environment over the past couple of years. Then the final book that will give you everything you need to know to work in mathematical finance or be an investment actuary is The Little Book of Common Sense Investing by John C. Bogle. So this is very often recommended by anyone who's giving advice on how people should get into investing. Um, but basically it just goes through all of the main points that when I started as a fund researcher, I got told. So 
you've got to focus on costs. There's survivorship bias, so that basically if you have 100 funds, the probability that you know 10 of them massively outperform the market over 10 years is relatively high and the others will just die. So we don't want to put too much weight on skill there. We want to focus more on the probability of that being luck. It also talks about mean reversion, which is another common trait that it took me a while to pick up, but just would have been addressed immediately in this book. It also talks about index investing and the benefits of being passive investors. Uh, so yeah, this would have been a great kind of starting read uh, in my role as an investment researcher. I only just read it. I'd say I knew a lot of the concepts by the time I'd read it, but I wish I'd learned it earlier and this would have been a great one-stop shop. So there we have it. They are my top five books for anyone who's looking to get into mathematical finance or become an investment actuary. Obviously two of those I came across quite early in my career. Three of them I came across quite late and I wish I came across them earlier. I might do a follow-up to this as well, which will give you kind of another five books that would be more advanced. So if you want to kind of dig into more of the problems with the current theory that's put in those books, but those books will definitely give you the core baseline knowledge that you need to progress in your career. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to hear more from me, don't forget to check out this one here. Thanks.